and stand and sing our next song. It's the Unity Advent song, appropriately titled and time of the year. So we're going to get there in just a moment. So go ahead and stand and worship me up here on the screen.
As you breathe, realize your mind is slowing down and calming down. Preparing itself for awareness. Awareness of that divine presence. God is here, always here, always present. Always available to us at all times. God is here in all situations. Whatever is happening within our own lives, God is there. God is available. We open our hearts. Whatever is happening out there in our family, our friends in the larger world, in the world of politics and news. God is there. God is there. Let us hold that and know that truth, that God is always available. In our heart, we can ask what is mine to do? What is mine to do? We each may hear a different answer. But in this moment, in this moment, this place, this here, this time, we can know what is ours to do is to know love. know peace, to know that God is here in this moment. And let us move deeper then, deeper into that silence within us, where we are one with the one in the silence. In Gently come back just a little ways, holding to that connection, to that awareness of this divinity that is there. 
that is there, that reveals to us the secrets that are important to our growth, that reveal to us the strengths that are ours, that reveals to us the love that we are, that we can allow to flow from us, through us, reaching out, reaching out in love to those here in this room. And as we reach out to those in this room, we are reminded where two or more are gathered, there is that Christ light and energy in the midst. And we see it radiating out further as we join, as we join. And we reach out, each one of us, to those that we love and care about. And then we reach out to those that we do not know. We reach out to all of those who are in a place of openness and love and prayer and peace and joy in this moment and feel this energy expanding. We see it encircling the globe. We see it embracing all of those who are in a place of fear, a place of hatred, a place of hunger, a place of need. Oh, Spirit, we send out this energy. We channel this energy. We are aware of this energy far more than we can possibly comprehend. And we ask that we are. We are that radiating light. We are making a difference always when we move to that place of love and light. And so here now, in this time, in this moment, we are the presence of God. We have faith that allows us to move forward even when we cannot see the path. But you are the light. We are the light. And we say thank you, and so it is. Amen. Well, good morning, once again. Good morning. Good morning. I don't get to say good morning. <coughs> so today is the first Sunday in Advent. So today it is about living faith. So everybody got an Advent book, right? Okay. Um, all through this month, I'm going to be using a lot from from this book as we move through. So if you want to know what the topics are on Sunday and and you don't read the newsletter, but just follow through what the topics are in here, and that's what they will be. So, what does this mean, living faith? What is that? Did you know we all live by faith? Whether you have a, a faith in, 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 a, in God, in spirituality, or don't have any of that, we're still all living by faith. Think about things that you have faith in. You know, very simple things. Things that we have faith in here in, in the United States that if you lived in India or some other countries, we have faith that drivers will mostly obey the traffic laws. Right? We would be out there. I, can you imagine driving in India? Can you imagine driving in Italy? I never drove in Italy, but I was on a bus in Italy. <laughs> so, something very simple and basic we live by faith. We, we, we know things happen out there, but we have faith that we're going to get through fine in that process. Think about when you hand your credit card over to the person who pay, you're paying your bill at the restaurant. Do you know most Europeans are not going to do that? You know? They're not going to hand their credit card off to somebody else. They're not even going to lay their cry to, you know, when somebody brings a little folder and I stick my credit card in there and I lay it on the end of the table, your kids aren't going to do that. I've watched it happen. People can run in and grab things off your dining table and things. So we have, 
we have faith in how things operate here in the U.S. It has nothing to do with, with our spirituality. We also all have, well, let me tell you Webster's definition and you'll recognize some of these things. So, first of all, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Doesn't say whether that person deserves it or not, but in our awareness, we have that. A strongly held belief or theory. How many of us have beliefs and theories about things? All you have to do is get somebody talking about what happens after we go on to the next dimension there. Every single one of us has a belief and a theory. Thank goodness nobody here insists on anybody else believing their particular belief yes. or theory. Belief that is not based on proof. We all have beliefs that aren't based on proof. Um, actually, when you think about it, there's very little proof of a lot of things going on, but we operate as if it is true. It's also a system of religious belief. So Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, you know. So everybody who has a particular belief has a faith in, in the, that is a faith. So the difference between having a faith, my faith is unity, but then there, it's the active process in that faith, that living process within that faith. So living faith to me means two things. It is this faith that we are, how are we living our lives? How are we living our lives? And our spiritual faith. And are they connected in some way or another? So I want to think about that. Does how and what I believe in, in, in God, in, in the teachings that we receive here, does that interact within my own life? And if it isn't, if it doesn't, why are any of us here? You know, unity is about practicality. It's about learning things that make life better and easier for us. You know, Jesus was about practicality. You know, when you look at his teachings, they're about how do you get along better in the world? And how do you make that connection with that divinity that is an energy and a power that moves through you? So it isn't about, okay, on Sunday or Sabbath or whatever, we go off in our place and we practice a belief system. No, we take that in. And faith means that, okay, I'm stepping out in faith. I don't see the next step. But faith, a living faith means, okay, I stepped out, oh, yeah, it worked. What happened, the promise happened, I'm okay. Now I'm not in a place of faith, I'm in a place of knowing. And each time I take a step forward and become in a place of knowing, I'm more able to take another step out in faith, going beyond my boundaries. So we may start with blind faith. Okay, you know, what Carol said made sense, what I read made sense, whether, whether it's in the Bible or some other spiritual book. Okay, I really don't have any idea. I'm really kind of blind right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm going to step out and see what happens. And I pay attention to what happens. So each time I step out, first of all, it's, I'm not nearly so blind anymore. I might not be able to see that, but I have the experience. I know what has happened in the past. I'm willing to move forward in that process. You know, unity is about encouraging you to develop your personal faith. Never has anybody from the founders to anybody in unity to me, anybody here, want you to believe something or have faith in something simply because it's a unity teaching or because, you know, I'm a minister and of course I know what I'm talking about, right? No, you have to take it into yourself and you have to experience that. You have to <coughs> make that personal connection. You know, and a lot of times, particularly when you're hearing something new, you'll go, that's really weird. <laughs> and then you sit and you go, well, 
it's maybe weird, but it's not that hard, so let me just give it a try. And you begin to see what happens within your own life. Now, think about the things in your life. So here's where kind of the rubber meets the road. What kind of things do we have faith in in our life? We operate as if this is absolutely true. Well, one of the first things that I remember having faith in, and I'm not remembering all that far back, it was before I got into unity, but all of a sudden it dawned on me, my car takes care of me. Does that make sense? Now, I was in my late 30s before all the, and I think something happened to my car, and I was sitting in the driveway of my house, at my house, and realizing, oh, I'm right here where I can get on the phone, I can call somebody, and it triggered remembering, never had my car ever done anything where somebody or some help wasn't immediately available. And when I became aware of that, you know, I began verbalizing that and saying, my car takes care of me, and I'm saying thank you. And I wasn't really saying thank you to God, though I've always had a belief in God, and a lot of times when we do that, it's, it's automatically reaching out, but really I was my car takes care of me. We also sometimes have negative faith in things. Anybody know Murphy's Law? <laughs> if it can go wrong, it will. That was one of the first things my son brought that up to me very early on when I got into Unity. And I said, Murphy's Law does not live here anymore. And you know, <laughs> it doesn't live in my life. You know, if things can go right, they do go right. And over the years, I've read things where people have gone into businesses, and you don't hear it as much anymore. Maybe people have learned, but that there would be plenty of things around the office, and, or there'd be a plaque on the wall that would have that Murphy's Law on there, and the person would say, if you really want things to start moving better in your office, you will take that down. Mm -hmm. You will take that down, because think about it. What are we focused on? You know, where is our faith if we keep saying if things can go wrong, they will? We don't want to have that belief going on, so faith and belief. And people say, oh, that's just a joke. You know, our insides don't know the difference between a joke and something serious. That's the reason why visualization is so powerful. You know, in sports um, med, when somebody has an injury, you know, you hear this a lot with, with the Olympics and, and, and the big athletes out there. They have them do visualization first, visualizing whatever it is that's wrong, healing, and they, they can document this, that things heal faster. Mm -hmm. And then they visualize them actually practicing what they would be doing if they weren't sitting with a broken leg. Mm -hmm. And so many of them, they even improved through that visualization. Mm -hmm. So, there is a book out there, and I just saw the title here again. <coughs> Excuse me. i got to have my water up here. <coughs> Don't give yourself the luxury of a negative thought. Yes. Don't give yourself the luxury of a negative thought. Because every thought has power. So... You might take that on maybe blind faith to begin with, and then you start paying attention to where your energy and your attention is going in your life. So think about that. Think about the things in life that you have faith in. You know, your everyday life. And how has your spirituality begun to connect or change or shift that process? So many people mistake hope for faith. I think about that. <coughs> hope. Hope means, okay, yeah, I'm hoping something out there will come to pass. But faith says, okay, I know, I know that what is out there will happen. Faith takes it as having already been given. Hope looks forward. Faith declares that she has received even before there is the slightest visible evidence. So thanking, you know, I thank you, God, that I have, you know, that positive, thank you, God, that I am healed. Thank you, God, 
that I am being led in the right direction. That's faith. That is knowing that my prayers, my requests are going to be answered. Most of us want to say something is done after it's happened, after we can see that. But faith says, no, it's done before I can see the process. So the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, which is the whole chapter, is about faith. But this one particular verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The assurance. So here's my hope. But faith is the assurance that what I'm hoping for, the conviction of things not seen. So assurance and conviction rather than hope. Well, yeah, I hope. Yeah, kind of wishy-washy. Charles Fillmore explains, faith is the perceiving power of the mind linked with a power to shape substance. So what is substance? It's all of this stuff out here. The perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. Mind over matter, we kind of talked about that a little bit, I think, in, in Sunday school, or might have been a little bit before people came in, but, you know, the body-mind connection, how, how our thoughts and our stress and everything that is actual creation of the mind affects our body. But now think about the whole creative process. When people are in that process of creativity, they don't have any assurance that whatever the result is going to be out here, but they move forward in that process that something good, something creative, something that has not ever been before is going to take place. He goes on, the office of faith is to take abstract ideas and give them a definite form in substance. So take an idea and make it real. Ideas are abstract and formless to us until they become substance. The substance of faith. Now here's, here's the real kicker. Whatever you form in mind and have faith in will become substantial. Then you should be on guard as regards what you put your faith in. So faith is a two-edged sword when you're not realizing the kind of power that it has. So think about this. How do I know? You know, because that kind of stuff just happens so easily as we move through our day. We don't really stop and think about it. So what are your first thoughts when you kind of wake up in the morning? You know? And you kind of you get up and the haze begins to go away. And, you know, is it worry? Is it concern? Are you feeling stressful? Or you're going, oh, look out there. Sun is shining. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Oh. You know, and that awareness that whatever is coming, and you may word it or not even word it, maybe it's simply a feeling that whatever is coming up for me today, I'll, I'll be able to handle it. I have the resources to handle that. That, that divine in me is, is there always for me to call on. So practice that. Think about it. I'll give you, give you some clues about where you are in this process. So for me, my faith gives me confidence when things are uncertain. And I love, and I, I think I did a talk title on this, but I love this phrase. I haven't come this far to only come this far. <laughs> Think about that when things kind of get you. I haven't come this far to only come this far. And then I have a real casual relationship with that divine ending. And I'll say, okay, God, I didn't, I didn't have anything to do with myself getting here. So you handle it. You handle it. Now, of course, I had something to do with getting here. But it is a way of surrendering and letting go and saying, you handle it. And then that allows, okay, whatever I did to get myself in this situation, I'll begin to see it in a way that isn't beating myself up and using, you know, negative energy or anything like that. Oh, oh, that's, that's what's going on. Oh. So begin paying attention to what's going on with you when you begin your day. When we face uncertainty, 
We wonder if the resources will be there to get us through the situation. Now most of us have been in that place over and over again. We wonder. It is then we become aware of our faith or our lack of it. Faith is not a belief in a great cosmic rescue or supernatural <coughs> power. So sometimes, you know, if, if you're talking about faith or you're believing, I'll say, yeah, things are going to work out. I know that. And people may look at you as going, well, what do you think? you think God's going to reach down and put money in the bank or do this? Mm -hmm. No, that's not what it's about. I just know that the resources will be there. They will come to me. I don't have to know how they come. And they will come in a very natural way. Mm -hmm. They will not come as something <coughs> <coughs> amazing and out of the ordinary. I have faith that this bronchitis stuff is going to go away. <laughs> It is better, and without even asking, we had a guest speaker last week, and there's no way I could even have stood up here and done this last week. So it's that quiet knowing that in any situation, whatever I need will be available. So this morning we said the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Do we really believe that process? And you check in with yourself. And how, how do we use that? How do we practice that? Now, everybody has a handout. So we're going to sing. We're going to sing in this handout. Actually, it's on page 78 in your red book. As I was looking at this and pulling things together on my top, all of a sudden it dawned on me. You know, you've heard this phrase, when you sing, you pray twice. So some of you may not be aware of this. this prayer has been a very um, popular one in unity for many, many years. Many people are going to say this just like they can the prayer of protection. So we're going to say this. And you want to pull out your red book. It is in the book number 78.
keep me reminded that everything is in the right place because some of the largest ones and the largest one that I really have that I can look back on took five years for me to be able to look back and go, I never could have figured that out. I never could have made that plan. I mean, it includes moving from one place to another. It included huge things that just fell into place but could not really be seen until it was looked back on. So what, you don't want to have to wait five years or a year or even a month sometimes. Pay attention to all the little synchronicities. Now, what do people say about it? They'll say, oh, that would have happened anyway. But a lot of them were. That the big one that I was, you no, know, there was. It wasn't just average everyday things that happened. But a lot of it is in the timing. Yes, this would have happened anyway. But look when it happened. It happened just when it was needed. It happened just when I asked. So pay attention to those synchronicities, and you begin to become aware, you begin to have faith that I don't have to plan it all. That it will be there as I need it, as I go through. <clears throat> so I want to read this from you, from the Daily Word. Receiving a phone call from someone I have been thinking about, experiencing a dream that gives me clarity about a troubling situation, finding an object that I thought I had lost, these are examples of synchronicity, divine coincidences that occur when I may need them most. These divine coincidences are God-like in action. Prayer helps me synchronize mind, body, and spirit with the wisdom and power of God. The more attuned I become to the divine, the more aware I am of the many coincidences that come my way. It is as if blinders have been taken off to reveal blessings that have always been in front of me. I see the world in a new, exciting way. I am attuned to God's blessings that are continually being revealed. And from Isaiah, I love this. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will. And then from the chapter of Matthew, when Jesus talks about the utter futility of worrying. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Well, you can take some away. <laughs> you probably can't add it. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And they tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. And that's not practical. I don't know what is. <laughs> but that idea, and I was reading um, in Emmett Fox, and he was pointing out, you know, what he was really saying about the birds and the flowers. And everything. They were being what they truly were. 
or what they are. And God takes care of them. This is who they are. They weren't trying to be anything different. They didn't look out there and say, oh, you know, I don't want to be a lily. I want to be a tulip. I want to be a pansy. I want to be a, you know, the birds looking. I want to be a duck. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. be what they truly are and being taken care of. For us to be who we truly are and know that we are taken care of. Because who are we truly? We said the Lord's Prayer, our Father, so we are all children of that divine. We are all connected. We are one with the divine. So in closing, so y'all have this, and you might read along with me, but I want to read the first Sunday in Advent, Living Faith. The same faith that was in young Mary as she set out on her journey to Bethlehem is available to me. It is part of my spiritual inheritance, a very part of my being. Like Mary, I hold to my faith when the way is unclear. I release any worry, doubt, or fear, and listen to the still, small voice within. I open my heart to divine guidance. As I quiet my thoughts and become still, the answers come. My needs are met. And all is well. And so guess where I got reminded of the scripture I just read? That if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of growing faith? <laughs> Thank you, Carol. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and stand and sing our next song, which is Sunlight. It's in the red book, 114, 114, or it'll be up on the wall.